Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to touch on uh, mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS, and <clears throat> really what it means and what I believe has mistakenly been implied here. Now, just for as a general purpose, when medicine has the word syndrome in the title, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome. The word is purposefully used because we don't exactly know what's going on. But here's this group of patients with this kind of similar stuff and we're just gonna put them in this box we call syndrome. But really from the medical standpoint, it's recognized or supposed to be recognized that that's not a precise diagnosis. You may start working in that box and like, oh, here's a subset of this and here's a subset of something else and so forth. So <clears throat> mast cell activation syndrome isn't really a true diagnosis as the way we think of uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus. Okay. Now, so what is it? Where are the mast cells? The one thing that people, many clinicians don't know is that you have your small intestine, you got this tube, okay? And in the tissue surrounding that tube, <clears throat> it's called the lamnia propria, they estimate it is about 70% of the body's entire white blood cell mass. 70% of all your white blood cells. They aren't really circulating in the bloodstream. Some are, three, four percent maybe. The rest are in the tissues and 70% are wrapped right around the small intestine. Now, mast cells are white blood cells. Most of your mast cells are wrapped around the small intestine also. Okay, now, <clears throat> the only really true medical condition we know of for mast cells is the thing called mastocytosis. And that's where they grow in abnormal numbers and we're worried because a subset of those patients, it can turn into a, a form of blood cancer, a leukemia, but it's uh, from mast cells, okay? And it doesn't happen very often at all, but that's really the one we know there is, this is a true diagnosis, not a syndrome. Mast cell activation syndrome is when you have overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. Now, people will also just call it, you can call this SIBO if you want, Many researchers are now using the word dysbiosis to imply this. When you get that and you overwhelm the integrity of the small intestine, stuff starts leaking through the seams right into that tissue, right where all those white blood cells are. And those cells are designed to react to anything that's not your tissue type. It could be a fragment of a bacteria or a fragment of a banana, and you get an inflammatory response. And mast cells are part of the inflammatory response. And histamine release is one of these inflammatory mediators. Okay, It's the part of the whole package. And so when the doctor is saying, you know, some people will clearly, they'll, and, and I, I won't be surprised if they find like, say nightshades. There's certain chemical compounds in this variety of plants called nightshades that might stimulate the white blood cells more than citrus fruit, okay? And, um, and there may be some just particular plant matter chemicals or bacterial fragments that are gonna trigger mast cells to release histamine a bit more. Because I've seen patients, they eat and they get hives to almost everything, okay? But when you fix the overgrowth in the small intestine, the leaky gut will heal typically within a few weeks and it stops. It literally stops. And so, or it's dramatically better. I'll even phrase it that way. And so <clears throat> really the vast majority of all this mast cell activation stuff, and they'll even show you blood tests, here's your histamine levels. I totally agree with all that. It's not a disease. It's a symptom of leaky gut, typically from an excess of 
bacteria in the small intestine. But as you may have seen in my other videos, we now know there's a different type of leaky gut that potentially is, that's caused by COVID. And uh, this is a glutamine deficiency state that you need glutamine for. So bacterial overgrowth, you need Rifaximin. Uh, and uh, if it's post-COVID, you need glutamine. If you're a long hauler, typically from what I'm seeing now, they do better with both. So, but get back on the point, mast cell activation is not a particular disease. It's really a symptom. And what is it a symptom of? It's a symptom of leaky gut. It's that simple. All right, that's all for today. Everybody have a good day. Bye.